Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to Peak Human. I'm Brian Sanders. Took a little week off here. Got a lot going on once again, but please make sure you go back and listen to all the other old great episodes. If I ever take a week off, that's an extra week for you to listen to these great episodes that I've done. Got over 170 now, and they're pretty much all spectacular, I'm telling you. It's not just me saying this. Get feedback every day about how much people have learned from them, how they've changed their lives. This is really great info, everyone. So please give a review on iTunes or whatever podcast app you listen to. Check it out on the Food Lies YouTube, which I can't post this episode to, which is part of my story. I'm in the middle of getting banned from social media. Not really, just a little temporary strike on YouTube from some episode I posted 11 months ago with a doctor sharing their opinion, sharing their experience. No misinformation at all, just a doctor talking about their experience, Dr. Chris Dan with Dr. Gary. You can go back and find that one on Rumble or you can listen to it because it's still up on any podcast app, but it was removed from YouTube for medical misinformation for some reason. On the same day that I got blocked from Instagram and now people can't tag me because I shared a news clip from a major news outlet in the UK. Strange times, 1984, reread the book. I'm telling you, it's all happening. But anyway, this podcast will go out on all podcast platforms and Spotify, but it will not be up on YouTube. You can go to my Rumble, just search Food Lies. I think it's easier to search one word, Food Lies, and you can find me on Rumble. You can find the video version here with the wonderful Lee Aaron Keneally, MD. She's amazing. She's in great health. She's not young anymore, but she still looks young because she eats well. That's how I found her in the first place. She has an Instagram where they share the meals that these doctors eat, and they are amazing. It's a sapien diet. They're eating animal foods. They're eating whole foods. That's it. Simple. And they all are doing well. They're treating cancer. They're reversing disease. They're staying healthy themselves. This is such a great episode. We had to split it up into two parts. We had a bit of some technical issues with the recording, and we had to do it in two parts, which is great. All the better. More time to talk to the great Dr. Lee Aaron Keneally. A little bit more about her. Lee Aaron Keneally, MD, is a prominent leader in the integrative and functional medicine medical field. She is the medical director of two amazing clinics, the Cancer Center for Healing and the Center for New Medicine. The clinics have become the largest integrative medical clinic in North America and visited by patients from all over the world with 47,000 patients and growing. She's authored two books, including The Cancer Revolution, and was named one of the top 50 functional and integrative doctors in the country in 2017. Check out her site, KeneallyMD.com. Now, a little bit more news before we start. Please go to nosetotail.org. We have been out of Primal B for a second, but we're about to be back next week. One week from when this podcast airs, we will be back with our Primal Ground Beef. I'm telling you, it's so hard to keep all this stuff in stock. We're a small operation. I want to stress that. We're not Amazon. We are not Costco. We're not Walmart. We do one animal at a time. It's great for the consumer. It's great for the animals. It's great for everyone involved, except for me <laughs> and trying to keep stuff in stock and trying to manage all these logistics and business stuff. So go to nosetail.org, get the highest quality meat you can get. This stuff is regeneratively raised. This stuff is in West Texas. This is where the land needs regenerating the most. Doesn't get the most rainfall. There's a lot of land and my ranchers are regenerating it. They're using the holistic management techniques. Their grandpa was taught 30 years ago by the great Alan Savory, and they're still using these techniques to get the healthiest animals possible. No outside inputs, no pesticides, fungicides, no chemicals. They're getting a very diverse diet of hundreds of different species of forage, which makes their meat extra delicious and extra nutritious. I just did a taste comparison recently at a little barbecue we had, and the nose tail meat was by far richer you could just tell there was so many more of these secondary compounds that Dr. Stefan von Vliet studies that I had an episode with earlier. That's what's great about these diverse rangelands that these cows occupy. They get all of the different vitamins and minerals and flavonoids and secondary compounds that helps make their meat healthier. So again, that's at nosetail.org. We also have the biltong. If you want the convenient, handy, dried meat little packages on the go, no curing agents, no sugar, no added ingredients, just a little bit of vinegar and spices with the great meat. We have the body care. The skin food is back in stock. We're still working on those other products, the deodorant and the hair care. 
such a long process. I have to tease that one more time before it comes out. It's going to be exciting when we're done. They're really great. I'm testing them now. So that's again, nosetail.org. Of course, the seasonings as well. Add those seasonings into your cart. Make it a whole package. It's an early Christmas gift to yourself. Great health, helping the ranchers, helping the land. It's a win, win, win. Let's do it, everyone. Nosetail.org. And also make sure to go to sapien.org. Join the newsletter there. The newsletter cannot be censored. We're going to need to go direct to you. Just go to saving.org, sign up for the newsletter. There's other stuff there. There's a tribe. There's a saving program. If you're new to this, jump in the program. You'll change your life. And so without further ado, enjoy this episode with Dr. Lee Aaron Keneally. Hello, hello. Welcome back, everyone. We are live with Dr. Lee Aaron Keneally. How are you doing? Great, great, great to be here. Oh, wow. I'm so glad we got this going. I want to start with saying I love your Instagram posts. That's how I found you because you and your team eat amazing meals each day and are setting a good example. And I love that. Yeah. Every one of our, well, all of our senior staff, the doctors, practitioners, and all are embracing health and healing. So, well, that's great because it has everything to do with what we're going to talk about today, which is cancer and nutrition and health in general and all the things that you deal with. So can you tell us what, what you do over there? All right. Um, well, first of all, I kind of want to talk about how, you know, I started out. And, Absolutely. Um, I started out, um, interestingly, growing up, you may know Adele Davis. Mm -hmm. uh, you? I don't know. Yeah. So this is a, she was a very famous nutritionist mm. uh, in the fifties. Okay. And she wrote book, let's have healthy children. Let's have health, you know, healthy families, et cetera. And so I grew up in the, I was born in the fifties and my mother was huge on like what we ate. There were six kids and we all, we had our own farm. And so we I ate, we had our own farm and my mother would go buy an entire cow and have we had a deep freeze and we had this entire deep freeze of meat and so um that's how i grew up we did not have cereal or packaged foods or anything like that so the things that are very popular today like going back eating meat which mm -hmm. what they've been doing for hundreds of thousands of years and bone broth and sauerkraut and eating from the land, hunter and gatherers. And so when I started my practice um, 36 years ago in Los Angeles, uh, I thought, okay, how can I grow my practice? Well, everyone wants to lose weight, right? So I found this nutritionist. She's actually a registered dietitian, but she had a history of anorexia. And I'm like, oh my God, she's going to be the perfect person because she truly understands mm -hmm. eating and and the battle of eating. And so anyway, so I started 36 years ago with the nutritionist in my practice. And at that time, I was looking at very broad, expansive blood work on why somebody would have an ineffective metabolism. Anyway, and so one thing has led to million pathways to where we are today now. And so at our clinic, we combine the best of conventional Western medicine, whether it's blood work, whether it's scans, ultrasounds, you know, uh, CT scans, because, you know, we do need to use some modern technology to evaluate each patient. And now the array of testing that we have today that we didn't have 30 years ago, which would be mold testing and gut testing and uh, you know, hormone testing. I mean, we didn't have all the, the, what's available today. I tell people about 1.2 million PubMed articles are written per year. So the doctor today, what he or she learned in medical school, I mean, it's old, okay? Mm -hmm. Even 10 years ago, it's old. Even mm -hmm. five years ago, it's old. And if you look at the people in British Medical Journal, New England Journal of Medicine, the editors say that, most of the papers written, a lot of them, the validity is somewhere between one and 5%. So we've got to go back to really how the body works. You know, we are a biophysical, biochemical, and bioenergetic being. 
And we've got to restore optimal function and homeostasis in each patient, okay? So here at the clinic, like I said, I will do a very thorough history and physical, but our history is not just like, okay, what's your problem? What's your diagnosis? And here's your drug and see you later. Bye. So that's not how we treat patients. So when a patient comes in, we have them fill out their history and physical. I used to have like a 10 page uh, history because I wanted to know as much as about the patient as possible. Then my staff said, oh, Dr. Kennedy, that's way too long. People are going to you know, get overwhelmed with that kind of history. So I sit down with the patient and I get the fundamental aspects of their history, okay? And then I go through their lifestyle, okay? Because we know that what you eat and how you live is the cornerstone of illness. So if the doctor of today, though, does not have the energy, time, or interest to know how someone lives, all right? They don't know how they sleep. Your day starts when you go to sleep, okay? So if you don't sleep well, the rest of your day is not good, okay? And we already know we're learning all the time the miracle nature of sleep and all the the amazing benefits of sleep. So then um, water, most people unfortunately don't drink water and then their quality of their water is not great. You must drink purified water when we know the pharma in the water, the chemicals in the water, the fluoride of the water, I mean, just on and on and on. You can't not drink your tap water, okay? If you just go online and look what the chemicals are, uh, one of our staff did this last week and he looked up all the chemicals that were in his water and every one of them said, you know, el- all the levels were elevated and then it says cancer causing, okay? So this should be like known to everybody, right? Mm-hmm. We should be educating for public health reasons, like we can't drink the water. <laughs> so you need to invest in some kind of water purification system. Then I want to know what they eat. So I ask them specifically, what do you eat? Breakfast, lunch, dinner. And so most of the time when people have come to me, they already have started changing their eating, like eliminating sugar mm-hmm. you know, out of their diet. Okay. So then, but they don't understand the science of food. Okay. So we've got to teach them then. uh, And we start out, you know, slowly teaching them. Then I ask them, you know, what is your exercise? What does your movement look like every day? So I go over that. And then I ask them, what has been your stress for cancer patients over the last 10 years? Now, I believe stress is an important component in every disease, But when a cancer patient, I say, what's happened? Because cancer is a 10-year disease. From one cancer cell to tumor formation takes about 10 years to see on conventional imaging. So if you really study how people, what they're stressed, they tell you they unload about what is going on. Sick child, sick parents, you know, loss of a business, difficult marriage, difficult family members, whatever it is, Mm -hmm. they all have a very, very, very large, long history of chronic stress. And so in medicine today, that's not addressed at all. In fact, that if you, what my patients tell me that they go to their doctor, the doctor says that what you eat doesn't matter. Well, every doctor went to medical school and they learned about biochemistry. And if you know biochemistry, it's all about the information of the food you are eating and ingesting every day. You're either turning on, you know, the Krebs cycle of energy and you are, it's either functioning or not functioning. And then we need to understand the interference fields, whether it's heavy metals, toxicity, infections, et cetera. And we all know there's some paper after paper drawing people's blood breast tissue, umbilical tissue with hundreds of chemicals. And I tell people, we know maybe the potential of one, but what is the synergistic potential of 200 chemicals or 10 heavy metals? What is that? And every individual is an original. So how you take care of one patient and what you see in one patient is going to be different in the next patient. That's why you can't have cookie cutter prescriptions, because how can everybody fit into one 
avenue. They can't mm -hmm. because their genetics is different. Their metabolic systems are different. Their environment is different. Many, many different things are influencing what we call epigenetics, the which is the influence on top of your own genes. Okay. So years for years, cancer was thought to be a genetic disease, mm -hmm. but actually it's only about 5%. Okay. And if we go back uh, and study the history of all these different scientists, Warburg had the best explanation and now has been proven in journals that War that Warburg said that cancer is, you know, a defect in the mitochondria. And we have, you know, our the we go from oxidative phosphorylation to glycolysis using sugar to feed the cancer. And then because the cells are weak, only making two ATP as opposed to 36 ATP in a typical Krebs cycle, then we have this consumption of sugar because I need more and more sugar to stay alive. And then of course, you know, um, we're under my, all of us are under mitochondrial attack. Our mitochondria are the powerhouse engines of our cells that give you energy. It's the currency of life. And so we're all under mitochondria attack because we live in a world with bad air, bad water, mm -hmm. bad food, outrageous exposure to chemicals and the electromagnetic field. So we have this invisible energy web around us that has grown in the last uh, 30, 40 years. In the 80s, it started. And then now we have you know, an exponential with satellites and cell phones and iPads and computers. And yes, it's a wonderful technology because you and I get to do this podcast right now. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, we have to have countermeasures in place that patients can do. And we've got to teach our patients. So Doctor means to teach, physician means to heal. So we need to teach our patients and a constant education, but we also need to teach our patients how to heal themselves. I tell people self-care is the new health care. We mm -hmm. obviously, I always tell people, if our conventional paradigm was working, we rank 43rd in the world in health care. 43rd. So you're better off in a third world country than you are here. And everybody- and how much do we spend? <laughs> what? And how much do we spend the yes, most? We spend twice as much as any other country. So what we're doing, our paradigm is not serving our population and our people and the humans that could be so excellent and optimal. I mean, this is what, but the, the good news is, it's like, you do your podcast, but look, at there's so much education now on how to be healthy. And what I see through my Instagram um, column is that the young people are saying, no, we cannot do this. So the young people now are being incited to change not only themselves, but their family. And so I do see a movement of learning to ward, you know, heroic health. All right. And that we've got to change. And I tell people, we can't just change ourselves. We have to change our family because family is the nucleus unit. You know, because if one person gets sick, it drags down the entire family. So we've got to, we've got to focus on one, heal yourself first. Self-care is the new health care. And I say that because we, especially since COVID, that it's become really conveyor belt you get this medical problem, you get this drug, these scans, this blood work, this drug, and off your, you know, on, mm -hmm. on your way. And so we, there's 10 medications written per man, woman, and child in this country. Mm -hmm. And medications are again, a mitochondrial toxin. So you're just adding to the load of destruction of mitochondria. So we've got a real crisis in healthcare and we've got to all stop and look and what we're listening. I know that there are doctors changing. I do. I see them every day, like being awakened. But as you know, the integrative functional model isn't just go to a functional medicine course for a weekend or a week. This takes years to learn because they've got to unlearn 
all what they learned long time ago. Yes, we need to know anatomy. We need to know physiology. We need to know biochemistry. We need, yes, we need to know those functional foundation of how the body's ecosystem works, but our prescriptions and our teaching and our, our, our teaching the patient healing and addressing the body, mind, and spirit in an entire biological system. That is what is missing in conventional medicine. Mm. And we have to, we can't look for the panacea. There is no panacea. There is no one night wonder. You know, a lot of humans are like, oh no, I want a quick fix. Okay. Well, there is no, there is no quick fix. They, you, you have this miracle of 50 trillion cells, 100,000 chemical reactions taking place per second. There is no quick fix to that, okay? And everybody doesn't understand the miracle of life that they were born with. And we've got to teach our patients how to steward their life so they can take care of their loved ones. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's Mm -hmm. kind of, um, you know, our overall kind of uh, address how we, you know, begin to take care of patients. And so I love uh, the fact of really promoting prevention and early detection of all diseases. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, Brian, that just doesn't sell. Mm -hmm. What gets people's attention is a diagnosis. And we've got to steer away from that. But if you think about it from birth, Who is taught about health? When you're a teenager, you're taught a health class in high school. You know, in high school, where's your head at? Everywhere. Mm -hmm. Hormones are changing. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't, you know, you don't really get it. Yes, you take this health class and then, you know, six weeks. Well, you can't learn the human Mm -hmm. system in six weeks, as you know. And so um, we've got to, we've got to really set up communities of health and healing is what we have Mm. to do. And Mm. so that's what we try to do here. We have regular education. Um, Of course, we have designated practitioners, whether it's it's psychological, emotional, spiritual health. Is it eating health? Is it exercise health? Whatever it is, we have a regular cancer conversation every other week where we highlight a topic. We highlighted IV vitamin C last week. The week before, we highlighted viruses and cancer. So we highlight so we can slowly, slowly, you know, educate our patients. Mm. And so, and our treatments, you know, our treatments, sometimes, again, we may have to use medications as a bridge to get to the other side. So especially if a patient comes in here with cancer in their stage four, they're going to have to do something to shrink that cancer. So in our clinic, we use something called fractionated chemo. And so what that is, is chemotherapy at 10% dose. We use insulin, cancer cells like sugar, right? So they have insulin-like growth factors on their cells. And so we use insulin to, we give that to the patients to prime the cancer cell so that they selectively take up the chemo. So that's mm-hmm. a gentler, more, um, pay, you know, it's a very gentle, easy approach to handling a cancer patient because if they do conventional chemotherapy, it's very harsh. It, it There isn't a system in the body that chemotherapy doesn't affect. So if you have to do conventional chemotherapy for some reason, you must apply the collateral support to the patient, okay? Taking care of their immune system, taking care of their liver, preventing neuropathy, preventing nausea. So this is what we do in our clinic is we have countermeasures, usually all natural, for the patient to handle the chemo, whether they do fractionated chemo here or conventional chemotherapy. So, and also like, like, for example, if our patient needs to have a biopsy, we prepare them. We automatically do an extensive, very extensive blood work in conventional oncology. They do a chemistry and a CBC. So a chemistry panel looks at your electrolytes, your proteins, calcium, those things, and the liver function, kidney function. 
A CBC looks at your white count, which is a very important part of your immune system, and your red blood cells and hemoglobin to make sure you're not anemic or you have some other issue. But in our practice, it's a very broad, expansive look at entire blood work, okay? We look at hemoglobin A1C, which is a reflection of your sugar over 90 days. If pre-diabetics and diabetics have a higher incidence and prevalence of cancer, so we want to make sure that patients, and also now we have a flurry of metabolic syndrome in patients and diabetes, so we have to make sure that their hemoglobin A1C isn't high. Then we check C-reactive protein. C-reactive protein is a nonspecific marker for inflammation. Inflammation is the part of a cancer process, but it's inflammation of many processes, okay? Heart disease, Alzheimer's, et cetera. So we want to make sure people are, there's an epidemic of vitamin D deficiency. Mm. So vitamin D influences over 30,000 genes in your body, turns on apoptosis, which is programmed cancer cell death. And so- just doing basics, obviously thyroid, thyroid's the battery to your body. People who have low thyroid and there's an epidemic of thyroid diseases, Hashimoto's, which is autoimmune and low thyroid. So if your thyroid doesn't work, then your cells can't take care of you because thyroid, it, your thyroid is the battery to the cell. And so we've got to have proper optimal thyroid uh, function. And so, and then I will do, I always check everyone's hormones because, for example, women and men today have estrogen dominance more prevalent in men. I'm um, excuse me, women than men, but men have it too. So you've got to check their estrogen, not only their estrogen levels, estradiol and total estrogens, but you've got to check how they metabolize the estrogen, okay? And then if women and men do not have enough sufficient progesterone levels, progesterone is anti-growth. So we want to make sure that they have the proper balance of estrogen and progesterone. And then we always check testosterone in both men and women because that hormone controls many, many other functions too. And then we have selective blood tests that we do PHI, that's an enzyme phosphohexoisomerase, that's an indication of hypoxia, part of Otto Warburg's principle is an anaerobic metabolism, a metabolism without oxygen. So that induces hypoxic inducible factor that creates the production of lactic acid. So we've got to know that because if you have low oxygen, you have this environment for cancer. So if you do not change the terrain and the garden of the patient's cells, the cancer comes right back. And so that's why we have a one and two diagnosis, but are also our percent survival is not great. Nixon declared war on cancer in 1970. Here we are in 2022. I tell people, is cancer less or more? Cancer is much more. It's one mm -hmm. in two people today expected to grow 30% in the next five years. And so all of us, all of us together, collectively unified should be preventing this in every single patient, educating them, motivating them to get this blood work and make changes little by little. I know it's very difficult in the beginning because you live life one way and now we're telling you to live mm -hmm. life another way. So to transform humanity takes time. I tell people usually it takes a year for you to change your living environment and change your behavior and change the way you're living, okay? By using, you know, non-toxic ingredients, air purifiers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, so it's, it, it's, 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 it's understand the body in a comprehensive way. So that's why we do the extensive blood tests. Like for example, I had a patient, 18 year old yesterday who had testicular cancer and he was diagnosed last year, had an orchiectomy, which is removal of the testes. And then they did several doses of chemo. And so they were tracking him with blood work. And there was a blood test that they did do called LDH lactate dehydrogenase, which is an indication of acidity. And remember I said, cancer is acidic, sugary, and low oxygen. So they saw that number, but what in conventional medicine do you have for acidity? Nothing. They don't 
they don't mm-hmm. have anything. There is not a medicine for everything in mm-hmm. like, for example, fatty liver. Is there a drug for fatty mm-hmm. liver? No. It's called change your eating. Change your diet and life. Change your diet. Exactly. Change your diet. Change what you're eating. Exactly. Fast. Exactly. All right. So we have all these medical conditions now that there's not a drug for. You know, drugs have reached their point of no return now. And so we've got to, again, go back to the basics of teaching people how to live and take care of themselves. And so... um, uh, it's, I know we all sound like a broken record, right? Because mm-hmm. there's so much education now out there of, of really how to live. I mean, there's just, you know, it's abounding now. So there's no reason that we aren't all, but I think it's the human condition. We get used to the same old thing. Mm-hmm. And then they go to the doctor and if the doctor doesn't have answers, they think, okay, well, that's just the way it is, Right. Mm-hmm. But every patient should be partnering with an integrative functional doctor, medical doctor who knows both. And I call it the new updated medicine because the, we're what we're doing today in 2022 is not what I did even five years ago because we have to continually and and I can't even keep up with the literature. Like I said, there's mm-hmm. you know 1.2 million you know PubMed articles. There's no way you can keep up unless you've got a team, even with the team to put all that information together. And then we have to look at the validity and the statistical analysis of test of, of studies because Amgen did a retrospective analysis of cancer studies in 47 out of 52 studies could not be duplicated after 50 times. So even that, and I always go back to, here you are, a clinical trial, I'm going to give you a drug. Okay, here's the drug for your condition. And you didn't address the hundreds of other factors that are involved. So you're just relying on a drug to be the cure-all when you have the cure-all within you. And we are not understanding how miraculous healing our body is. And if we could just teach that to every single person, and I do see it changing, it's too slow, but it is changing because we're living with autism rates super high, illness rates super high, mysterious diseases that no one has any answer for, correct? Mm -hmm. And so so we're seeing it change and we're seeing people become more awakened. Yeah, wow, that was amazing. You laid it all out there for us. We got to break down some of this stuff. Right. it's, It's so, okay. I I think your approach is amazing because it's the most accurate and holistic and touching on both sides, the updated part, like using modern science mixed with ancient practices and knowledge. And that's, that's the best way to go. I've found is it's not like we're saying, Oh, go live in a cave with a loincloth at all. It's just like, Oh no, there's human, there's a way that humans can thrive and live. And it's everything you said, it's clean air and water and clean food and movement and non-stress and, and, and it's like we get labeled as crazy people that are like wanting to live in a loincloth. I'm like, no, this is how a natural human lives. And this is all being proven with modern science. It's hard to look through all the studies because like you said, yeah, 90% of them can't be replicated. But there are studies that show that, hey, we had it right all along if you just, you know, live like a human. So, hmm. Mitochondria. I, I love that part. Let's go back there because it, it that's like health all starts there. And you listed all these different ways that that energy production and the mitochondria can be affected. And that's kind of what people don't get. They're just trying to throw medications. Right. Right. And and people, well, people don't even know what mitochondria are. And so mitochondria are these little special organelles in the cell that give you your energy. So once you have death of mitochondrial, you have death of the human. So our number one priority for each patient is optimize mitochondrial function, okay? So what affects the mitochondria? First of all, how you think. You become what you think about most of the time. Thoughts are sending chemical messengers to every single one of your cells to how to heal or not heal. 
So if you're thinking negative, bad thoughts, and unfortunately, we we live in our subconscious, which is 95%. So if we have old recordings from in utero, and that we're told that we're stressed, we're not good enough, we we can't do this, there's negativeness in any form or fashion, or you grew up in a stressful, traumatic environment, we now know from all the studies, this started, you know, I use in my medical slides a couple of hundred years ago, that many doctors thought that stress was affecting, you know, the possibility of illness. Well, now the journal articles prove that stress and trauma are affecting our body. And I don't know if you know Bruce Lipton, Biology of Belief. Do you know him? You know, he he talks about, you know, he taught anatomy in medical school. And then he's proven how our thoughts are direct information to our cells to take care of ourselves, either heal or not. So I tell patients, you become what you think about most of the time. So if you say I'm invincible, I'm, you know, I am lovable, I am unstoppable, I have, you know, the innate ability to heal yourself. And so we teach our patients, we give our patients healing affirmations already typed up. And we tell them, look, you got to do this all day long. You got to learn how to love yourself and talk to yourself with the highest regard. And then we always, like I said, do emotional work because this is a pattern that's been going on for years. So they need nudging and an external source to help them get there. All right. Then like I, we talked about before, the water is laden with chemicals. Well, those are, and pharma water. If you look at all the pharmaceuticals that are in water today, chemotherapy, birth control pills, antidepressants, all of those chemicals the pharma water and the chemicals in the environment. We can talk about xenoestrogens. I mean, there are so many forever chemicals. I mean, unfortunately, it's just for all of us, for all of us. I mean, you and I aren't exempt. We've, we're mm-hmm. living in the same environment. And so those are attacking the function of the mitochondria. Then what you eat, eat eating is information. You know, what you eat is information, but you also need to examine what you're eating. So if you look at a package and it's got bad oils in it, then that's not going to work for you. If it's got bad chemicals, that's not going to, you know, work for you. So you got to know what the ingredients are in your food. That's why it's always good to eat things that have one ingredient. Okay. So one ingredient is the way to go. We got to go back how we lived, you know, a hundred years ago when people were hunter gatherers and they went and caught their cow and ate their liver and ate their meat. And that's how people, that's how people lived. I mean, even me, I grew up, we, you know, we had deer and we ate deer all the time. We had our own cattle. Okay. And so then, um, You've got to know, I always tell people, try to know the source of where you're getting them, because then you know the integrity and the ethics ethics, and the passion of that particular grower, all right? And so you know their philosophy is to give the best product possible, right? And so know who you're, that's why farmer's markets are so good, because you get to, you meet the grower right there. So you need to eat the the fruits and vegetables that are on the land and try, you know, you can buy organic and non-organic, buy organic because we now know the levels of insecticides and pesticides are high in patients who are eating, you know, non-organic, okay? So we've got to eliminate that also. And then, you know, people um, need to understand like we do in the nutritional testing, um, nutritional blood testing on every single patient that comes in here. And actually, believe it or not, most of your blood blood uh, tests are done, covered by insurance companies. Nutritional testing is covered by, you know, your insurance. So, in, in, so in, and now if you don't have insurance, all the companies have very good cash prices today. So like you can get a very comprehensive blood work for $250, okay? Mm. Nutritional testing is a couple hundred dollars also. So it's not like it's outrageously expensive anymore, but you've got to know. So one deficiency of a person can create a disease, all right? So, but your mitochondria are ravenous for the proper nutrients, okay? 
So I believe in always. So actually in the testing that I do, it says the mitochondrial integrity. So mm-hmm. I know if I need to people give people special supplements or really address it. I always try to address everything with their eating, um, but you know, not everything is possible. So sometimes nutritional supplements are needed. All right. Then if we have infections, lots of people have chronic candida. And why? Candida is a fungus. Why do we grow candida? Because every doctor gives antibiotics. You give antibiotics once, you've killed your entire your entire balance of uh, and your back be- be- all of your good bacteria, mm-hmm. right? That that keep not only the microbiome but all the microbiomes in your body, in your skin, your mouth, etc. All right, so you kill all of that. So then, most people have taken serial use of antibiotics, correct? Then some people take mm-hmm. steroids either through injection or orally. Okay. Then people eat sugar and then people are toxic. So you've got this perfect environment. So about 84% of patients who have cancer have candida. I always tell people, just go look at your tongue. If your tongue is white and coated, you most likely have candida. In our nutritional testing, it says the overgrowth of yeast. We have specific testing. They'll show the overgrowth of yeast. So you've got to address those infections. A lot of people have viral infections, whether it's HPV, whether it's herpes, whether it's Epstein-Barr, cytomegalovirus, herpes virus 6, all of these viruses, viruses coexist with you depending on your immune system. So your viruses can be asleep or awake. If your body's weak, the the viruses are going to be wide awake. They create inflammation to the mitochondria and drag down. So you talk about all these things that have possible to drag down mitochondrial health. And then we see why we're in the state we are, because we have all these things that drag down your mitochondrial health. And then we have inflammation, you know, inflammation patients, lots of people have inflammation. Inflammation is obviously caused from toxins, bugs, and nutritional deficiencies. So this is a vast, complex puzzle. It's not just, okay, go do surgery, chemo, and radiation. We have got to create this system that we're taking care of your mitochondria and everything else. And everybody that doesn't understand, for every medication you take, you damage your mitochondria also. So the average person's on many medications, right? Right. And they, we give out medications like it's no big deal. It mm-hmm. damages your mitochondria. It damages your liver. It damages enzyme systems. It damages many, many things. So our goal with all of our patients is to get you off all your medications. Now there are, like I said, there's always extenuating circumstances. And so sometimes patients, you know, have already come to us with extensive disease. And so we're troubleshooting and trying to, you know, optimize the patient and sometimes medications come into play. So, so my, we all should be trying to work on our mitochondria, but it starts with really how you think and what you're putting in your mouth. And so people need to be mindful of every single little thing because that will become their new you. That the mindset is huge. The, the, when I decided I'm going to be healthy, that was a turning point. And be, because I identified as someone who was healthy, then I started eating healthy. I started making other changes in my life and cl- like getting a water filter and doing all these other things. It is, it all starts with your decision and your mindset. This is amazing. I know you have to go and see patients. We're going to have to break this up and do a part two. So many more things we can get into, but w- what an amazing foundation we just laid for this. And, uh, you, you know, you got to do your work. You got patients, you're actively seeing people at the cancer center. What is the name of it? I know we're going to come back, but w- tell us um, just your Instagram and the name of your center. Okay. So we have, my Instagram is KeneliumD. So you can follow us every day. We have very important information all the time. Number two, for human optimization and chronic illness, we have Center for New Medicine, but for the cancer patients, it's Cancer Center for Healing. Cancer Center for Healing. If I had cancer, I'd go there. 
because you so many so many places are just standard, right? Most places right. are they use a standard mainstream. Then you find the small amount of cancer centers that are holistic. They all seem to be plant based. They are like meat is bad, you know, and that's why I wanted to talk to you. And we will talk more about that is not true. We're t- the processed foods are bad. Meat always gets blamed. Let's let's come back when you have some more time. Okay. And thank you so much. Well, thank you for having me.